today's lesson is topic writing. Writing about messaging apps. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger, and I'm Hanny, and it's our topic writing unit for the month of March in the year 2024. And today we're going to be talking about messaging apps. We're not only going to talk about it, but we're going to write about it, or at least you are going to write about it. If this were a topic that you were assigned by your teacher. In order to write an essay today, we're going to help you with that because messaging apps are things that people use every day, and I think there isn't one student listening to this program who does not use a messaging app during the day. 好，我们这个月的主题是写作，是要来表达对通讯应用程式的看法。我们知道通讯应用程式，尤其是即时通讯应用程式，它有很多功能，我们可以收发讯息啊，传档案、文字档案、音乐档案、传贴图等等，甚至可以视讯通话，有满足大家各种需求。那可能也是会有一些让人不太满意的地方，所以我们今天呢是要写一篇文章来表达对通讯应用程式的看法。那文章会分成两段，其中一个段。段落呢，我们会去简述通讯软体的各种功能，然后分享你最喜欢的功能，还要说明原因。那下一个段落则是要说明，如果你可以移除掉一项功能，你希望是哪一项？然后要说明你的理由。好，那我们接着就准备来练习写作吧。Okay, here's our example of this particular essay. It's all about messaging apps, and we begin by saying. In recent years, instant messaging apps or applications have become a ubiquitous method of communication, offering diverse features and functions that cater to various needs. So yes, indeed, these apps have become ubiquitous, which means they're common, they're all over the place, and they offer all sorts of features and functions because lots of people need those different features and those different functions. And these platforms allow users to exchange messages such as. Texts, emojis, and stickers. Indeed, you can exchange those messages with each other. They're instant. You can get those messages right away, and they involve texts, which you're just writing letters, or you can have those emojis, which are those happy faces or the thumbs up or whatever. And of course, you've got those cute little stickers with the little kids or the bunny rabbits or whatever. And they also let users make voice and video calls, which is actually pretty convenient. And you can share files. You can put attachments to your messages, and you can even play games. That sounds like a lot of fun. And they offer convenience and connectivity across different devices, which would be your smartphone, your tablet, or your PC. And that will enable users to keep in touch with people around the world. It will let you maintain contact with people no matter where they are in the world. 好，那我们现在开始练习写作。那同学们记得，你在下笔之前，你可以去先想一想，大部分的即时通讯应用程式可能有包括哪些内容，然后再去挑选你最喜欢以及最不喜欢的功能。那现在我们看到第一段呢，就是要来简单的描述即时通讯应用程式的优点，去简单叙述它的各种功能还有带来的好处。所以我们不用写的特别的细，然后还写说它可以让你换滤镜啊，干嘛干嘛，写一大堆，写的很详细。我们其实是要概。数那真正的重点是我们待会还要讨论到它带来的好处，还有你喜欢的点跟不喜欢的点。那像课文范例，它就有提到一些功能，像是交换讯息啊、传文字、表情符号和贴图啊，然后让使用者进行语音视讯通话、分享档案，甚至玩游戏这样子。好，那它就有提到它的便利性，然后让使用者可以跟大家保持联络，跟世界各地人保持联络。那现在换你写写看，也许我们也可以写说，像过去这十年。左右，即时通讯应用程式已经成为一种非常普遍的沟通方式。那它也可以满足不同使用者的偏好。主要功能就可以提到像刚刚课文范例提到的这一些，然后就可以提到说它可以在不同装置上使用，然后让我们方便联系这样子。那我们请 Roger 老师告诉我们，换你写写看可以怎么说。Here's how you might write this. Over the past decade or so, over the past ten years or so, instant messaging apps like、uh, Line or WhatsApp or Messenger have become a hugely popular means of communication. They are very popular. They are a mode of communication or a way to communicate. 
While offering a variety of features to meet the preferences of different users, their primary function is to make it possible to send and receive text messages. So it is true they offer a variety of features, like being able to change the appearance of your interface. There, you can use different colors and things like that. And also, you've got different features or functions, basically, which means you have different ways to send messages, whether it be by a text message or a voice message or whatever, or you can send videos or whatever. Even though it does offer these things, the primary function of these messaging apps is to make it possible to send and receive text messages. That's the most important part. You want to send that information in the form. Of a text written message, they also allow phone and video calls, file sharing, and gaming. Those are some of the features and functions of the phone. Better yet, or even better, they can be used across different devices, such as your phone or your tablet or your PC or your Mac or whatever, making it really easy to stay in touch with friends and family. Worldwide, and that's why we do this. We want to keep in touch with people. We want to maintain contact with them so that we know we're still alive and doing well. 好，那这边补充一下，我们刚刚课文范例以及换你写写看呢。我们其实都有用到像 allow somebody to do something, enable somebody to do something 来表达说这些程式啊，让某人得以怎么样，能够做到某事。我们也可以用说 make it possible for somebody to do something， 或是 make it easier to do something 去表达说使某事成为可能啊，使做某事更加容易。这些好用的句型其实都可以用上。然后我们也还可以用 better yet, better still, even better. 等等，更好的事去带出更多相关的点。好，那么接下来第一段之后面，我们是要写说分享你最喜欢的即时通讯应用程式功能，并说明原因。那我们来看看课文范例怎么写。Right, so we just introduced this topic to you, and now we'll be more specific. What you like about it? So one of my favorite features of these apps is the group chat feature. Interesting. Everybody can communicate at the same time through a group chat. I can communicate and coordinate. With multiple contacts simultaneously, which makes it easy to discuss plans, share updates, or organize events. So yes, you can have a group chat with your friends. You could be talking to them about your next outing to Yaming Shan or whatever. You can talk about where to meet and what to bring and stuff like that. What time to meet? You can talk about this with everybody at the same time, or you can use it in the office. You want to share updates with everybody else who's involved in this group, or you can organize events, maybe some kind of promotion for your company. You can get everybody together at the same time and have this group chat. 好，那像课文范例，他分享最喜欢的功能是群组聊天功能。透过群组聊天功能，可以同时跟很多名联络人沟通协调。那像在讨论计划啊，要分享最新消息或是筹办活动的时候，就会变得更加容易了。那换你写写看，也许你可以提到自己很喜欢这种表情符号啊、主题小铺什么的，让你有什么很多的表情符号贴图可以选择，让你的讯息会变得更生动、更有趣、很丰富这样子。好，那我们请 Roger 老师告诉我们，换你写写看，可以怎么写 ？And here's what you might write. My favorite feature of messaging apps is probably their emoji and sticker libraries. Yes, that is a certain fun part of messaging. You can send those emojis to make things a little more special, to make them cuter. You've also got those stickers that you can pick from. Sometimes they offer free stickers, but of course you can purchase more stickers to make your messages cuter and more lively and more expressive. And with hundreds of emojis and stickers to choose from, they make text. Texting more fun and expressive than it would be otherwise. Yes, I remember the old days with the dumb phones. If you wanted to send somebody a message, you only had the choice of text messages on those LCD screens. It was kind of boring, and you had to press the numbers in order to get a letter. It was very tedious. It took forever. Nowadays, of course, texting offers the texts, of course, but then you can also add those stickers and emojis. It's a lot of fun. 好，那接着进入我们写作的第二段，那就要来叙述一个你希望可以移除的即时通讯应用程式功能。然后呢，我们现在就要去提出某一项你不喜欢的这个功能。那我们来看看课文范例它怎么说。Okay, so here's what we're gonna write. However, one feature of messaging apps that I dislike is typing indicators. What are typing indicators? Well, here it says these indicators signal when someone is typing a message to you, but I find them 
Annoying. Yes, I do find those annoying as well because you never know when they're going to finish that message. It says so and so is typing, so you kind of wait, and then that indication disappears, and it's like, well, am I supposed to write them a message now, or am I supposed to wait some more? So yes, that does seem kind of annoying. It's very bothersome. 这边就提到说，我不喜欢的即时通讯应用程式，其中一个功能就是打字提示。这些提示器呢，会显示有人正在输入讯息给你，但我觉得这很恼人。我也是觉得这东西很困扰，你就一直在那边等，看他什么时候要完成他这个句子，然后有时候他又不写了，那我还要等下去嘛？这真的是蛮困扰的。好，那换你写写看，也许你可以提到的是已读功能。我也觉得这功能很烦，就是这个功能呢，会显示说讯息收件人。他已读讯息了。那有些人的确会觉得这好像可以促进沟通，确定说哦，你有收到讯息嘛？可是呢，有时候你就会觉得啊，他已读，但是不回我，这是怎么回事啊？就是造成一些不便，造成一些不愉快这样。Okay, so here's what you might write. One feature that really annoys me, though, is the read receipt feature. This feature shows when the recipient has read your message, and some people think it can enhance. Communication. So yes, indeed, that can be very annoying. That read receipt feature. When you send somebody a message, a little gray group of letters will appear next to it. Read, R E A D. It will of course be different in Chinese, but that indicates that someone has looked at your message. And yes, that can be annoying because sometimes you just want to send a message and then you want to forget about it. But if they've read the message, then you're kind of obligated to wait for them to respond. 好，那我们现在来看看课文翻译。他刚刚是提到说，这个打字提示就是会提示说有人正在输入讯息给你。那这个功能他希望可以移除掉。那现在就要来讲这个你不喜欢的原因喽。我们来看看课文翻译怎么说。Okay, and here's what we're saying. For one, or for one example, they draw my attention as I wait to see the message, distracting me from my current task. So they kind of distract you. They draw my attention because I'm waiting to see the message. And I'm distracted. I may not be able to perform my task as well because I keep thinking about other things, like when's this message going to come through? And for another, or another reason, is that they put pressure on me to reply promptly. In other words, I'm obligated to reply as soon as I can, and I'm concerned that I could be judged negatively if I take a long time to formulate a response. So yes, indeed, sometimes people do send you a message, and they kind of expect you to respond right away. If you wait too long, you might be judged negatively. They might think that you're indecisive, that you really don't want to be talking to them, and so they may think that you're really a bad boy or. A bad girl. <笑>好，那我们来看看课文范例。他提到不喜欢这项功能的原因，就是说，等着看讯息的时候会吸引注意力，让你无法专心当前的工作，而且会施加压力的感觉，好像要立即要回复。那自己也会担心说，如果花太长的时间才回复，也许对方有负面的评价这样子。好，那我们回到这个已读的这个功能上，也许你可以写说。在你过去的经验当中，如果有人对你讯息已读不回，会让你觉得说他们好像是刻意、故意要忽略你、故意不理你。那如果说可以完全都看不到讯息有没有被已读的话，也许感觉会比较好。我们就是会假设说对方是不是就是很忙在做别的事情，还没有查看讯息这样。好，那我们来请 Raj 老师告诉我们，换你写写看可以怎么写。Here's how you might write it. In my experience, however, if someone has read my messages. But not responded. That always makes me feel like they're deliberately ignoring me. So yes, indeed, if they have read my message but they're not responding right away, they're doing this on purpose. They're ignoring me on purpose. It makes me feel bad. Maybe they don't like me. They don't think I'm their friend or something. So if I couldn't see whether or not a message had been read at all, I might feel better. So yeah, I wouldn't be under so much pressure. I would think that it's possible that the recipient is just busy doing something else and hasn't checked if they have any new messages. That might be what's happening. 好，那接着我们到写作第二段落最后结论，就是要重申这一项功能被移除可能带来的好处。那我们看看课文范例它是怎么写的。Okay, here's what we're gonna say. So I think that removing these indicators or simply allowing users to disable them could relieve some social pressure and allow for more relaxed conversations. 
So again, this is what we think. If you remove those indicators of somebody's writing the message, it might lead to more meaningful and relaxed conversations. 好，那课文翻译这边就提到说，因此啊，我认为说移除这些提示器，或者是就是让使用者能够停用的话，可以减轻一些社交压力，然后让对话会更轻松。那回到这个换你写写看这边，我们说到这已读功能，也许你就可以说考虑到这一点。With that in mind, with that in mind， 就讲说我们前面提到的这件事情呢，如果把它考量进去的话，我想移除已读功能，就会免得感到那种挫折、沮丧的感觉了。好，那我们请 Raj。Here's how you might write it. With that in mind, remembering what we just talked about, I'd like to have the read receipt feature removed to save me from feeling frustrated. Indeed, that does seem to be something that can be annoying. That read receipt feature, and if it's removed, if it's gone, I won't feel so frustrated. I won't feel so annoyed. 好，那我们接着要进入第二部分，要来看看我们的范文 sample essay。Okay, so our essay today is entitled "The Pros and Cons of Instant Messaging Apps: The Good Things and the Bad Things About Those Apps." In recent years, instant messaging apps have become a ubiquitous or common method of communication, offering diverse features and functions that cater to various needs. Okay, so they're diverse; they have all sorts of different things you can use. These platforms or these messaging apps allow users to exchange messages such as texts, emojis. And they also let users make voice and video calls, share files, and even play games.、Uh, another feature they haven't mentioned is leaving voice messages. I like that feature; that's pretty convenient, so I don't have to type out the message on the keyboard. And they offer convenience and connectivity across different devices, enabling users to keep in touch with people around the world. So they offer convenience, or they are very convenient. And they offer connectivity. You can connect to various devices. It doesn't matter what they are. You can keep in touch with people. You can maintain contact with them. One of my favorite features of these apps is the group chat feature. When you get to talk to a bunch of people at the same time through a group chat, I can communicate and coordinate with multiple contacts simultaneously. Or at the same time, to coordinate just means to interact with other people at the same time. You do something, and they do something in response to that, and this makes it easy to discuss plans, share updates or new information, or organize events. 好，那我们这篇写作范文呢？它的标题写到 The Pros and Cons of Instant Messaging Apps。那么 Pro 就是指这个优点啊，赞成的论点 ；C O N Con 就是指这个缺点、反对论点。所以我们可以用 Pros and Cons 去表达赞成及反对的理由、正反意见、利弊、优缺点等等的意思。好，那我们看到第一个段落里面呢，要注意这边有用到一个 Cater to somebody or something， 这是表达说迎合、投合、满足某人或某事物的这个需求或是愿望。然后另另外要补充的是 ，emoji 这个字是表达表情符号、会文字，也就是像我们有时候会用那种什么笑到飙泪的那些表情符号。那么 sticker 是指贴图嘛？那这边要另外补充的是 emoticon，e m o t i c o n，emoticon 也是表情符号，不过它是指说像我们在简讯啊、email 里面，我们用键盘上的符号组成的图形，可能像一个这个冒号加上一个挂号，然后构成一个微笑符号，这种是 emoticon 跟 emoji。Okay, so I've just introduced this topic to you, and we basically talked about the good things. But here in the next paragraph, we're talking about something negative. It says, however, one feature of messaging apps that I dislike, that I don't like, is typing indicators, which indicates someone is typing a message. So you kind of have to wait for them to finish. These indicators signal when someone is typing a message to you, but I find them annoying. I find them troublesome, bothersome. For one, or for one reason, they draw my attention as I wait to see the message, distracting me from my current task. Yes, indeed, I keep looking at their message, waiting for their message to come through. When I'm trying to do something else, I'm distracted. 
For another thing, another reason why I don't like them is they put pressure on me to reply promptly or immediately right away, and I'm concerned or I'm worried that I could be judged negatively if I take a long time to formulate a response. Here, to formulate just means to come up with a response, to think of what you're going to say, and then type it out. So I think that removing these indicators or simply allowing users to disable them could relieve some social pressure and allow for more relaxed conversations. So if you disable something, of course, you tell the computer not to do that thing. And it could relieve some of this pressure. To relieve just means to get rid of it, so it's not so strong, and that would allow for more relaxed conversations. You would be able to have more relaxed conversations with people, and you wouldn't be so uptight. 好，那我们看到第二段落这边，它有用到 allow for something， 就是表达使某事变得有可能。那它也可以表达说考量到什么，将什么来计算在内。那另外要补充两个单字，一个是 disable， 它表示使无法使用，使故障失灵。注意这个 d i s dis， 它就是表达相反啊，不或是非的意思。那另外补充的是，刚刚我们用到 formulate a response， 那么 formulate 它就可以表达制定、策划或是构想的意思。好，那我们现在看完。Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today, and hopefully, all of you will be able to write an essay about this topic that is just as interesting as the topic that we talked about today. From all of us here at All Plus Interactive English, my name is Roger, and I'm Hanny. Goodbye. Bye bye.